Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic. And today, uh, I, I said in the last video we were going to be learning strings now, but it will be a lot easier to learn strings once I've gone over if statements with you, because then I can show you a bunch of true-false scenarios. But anyways, today we're going to be learning decision making, which are the if, um, if else and else statements, as well as comparison operators and logical operators, so both unary and binary. So quite exciting that we're going to be learning all this today. So the first thing I would actually like to show you right off the bat is this in action because I didn't show you before. So allow me to run this program. And I'll throw an A here and let's say 6. Well, I got this little error. Uh, originally, without this try catch, uh, it would have crashed on us. And we've had big errors and all that stuff. So this is why you do this. So the application doesn't crash for the user. And it says here, conversion from string A. Uh, to type single is not valid and the reason is because here we're trying to convert whatever the user typed in in the first text box to a single uh, and well you can't do that because A is a, is a string, is a character so that's not possible so but the user probably won't really understand that and just so you know even if you have it blank like that um, it would be read as like a blank string so you just want to avoid that altogether the error was what was in the upper left corner so you can change that if you wish. Uh, users probably wouldn't normally understand what that was, so you could just type in invalid number. And then if we run the program, and let's just leave them all blank. Uh, now it just says invalid number in this error. You can change it to whatever you want. And the message box button's okay and all that stuff. And we'll learn about icons. We'll, we're, we'll learn more about message boxes later. But anyway, in, or in a future video. But anyways, let's... Uh, try to figure out uh, a certain scenario maybe you want a user or maybe a teacher to type in a grade here so this is a very common example for programming languages but whatever uh, it's it's really the best example too but what if you want to determine whether they passed or not so whether they type, t uh, type in a passing grade or not so in order to do this uh, since we'll only be working with the first input I'm gonna make these comments here since we won't be using these two right now and let's create an if statement. So you type in if, a pair of parentheses, then put in your comparison in there, or your logical statement. We'll just make a simple comparison. And we'll put in input 1 is greater than 70. Or I'll, I'll just go greater than or equal than 70. I know this is probably weird showing this now, but the, the greater than equal to. But type in then, and then in a little end if, popped in there for you. Uh, and then in here what you can do is control what comes out on the label here. So let's uh, actually oh I don't I don't need the labels there anymore. Okay, so label output dot text is equal to you passed. Now what if they didn't pass? Well what you could do is create a separate if statement uh, after the end if it has to be after the end if that says input one less than 70 then but why would you want to do that why would you want to create a separate if statement when you can actually create an else so what you can do is create an else like this and then in here you can type in label output dot whoops dot text is equal to you failed it's as simple as that so I'll click save and then let's run this program. I think everything should work. Uh, so let's say I type in type in 70. It says you passed. But what happens if I type in 69? You fail. So as you can see the borderline's there and all numbers greater than or equal are just like that. So uh, so yeah, you can also make it for any kind of grade that you want. So if you want to go, you got an A, well, well, we'll want it to be greater than or equal to 90, right? Well, if you go down all these different if statements, um, well, you, you don't want to have separate if statements because as you can see in this example, for an example, if you created separate if statements for each one of these, greater than 90 is an A, greater than a B, 80 is a B, well, if, if you go on to the next if statement and it's greater than 80, well, if you put a 95, that's greater than 80, so you'll, it will change to a B. So what you want to do is use if else statements 
So basically what else if statements are is if the first if statement was not true, then it'll go on to the next else if like this. Then you type in a pair of parentheses and then inside you can type in well, whatever the next one you want it to be. So input two is oh I didn't want one. I want one. Greater than or equal to eighty. And you can type in your then as well. And throw this back in there. So copy, paste, and then make that a B. And then so on and so forth. I'll just copy all of this. Paste. And then change this to a 70. And then make this a C. And then all else. So if this turns out to be true, the benefit of else ifs is, is if the, whichever one ends up being true, it won't contain you on the next one. So you won't have to worry about it changing on you. So I'll just click save all and let's run this, see how it works. So if I type in a 96, I get an A. If I type in, let's say, 86, now it's a B. And if I type in 70, it's a C. And if I type in 68, you fail. So that's pretty fair. So yeah, so there's actually, uh, now I would like to show you a bunch of different comparison. Uh, so uh, before I go in, before I, uh, or I, I'll just go right into that. So a bunch of different comparisons would be, and I'm just going to create a comment here called comparison operators. Make sure I spelled that right. And basically, you have the equals sign. It'll check to see if both sides are equal to one another. Uh, these are good for comparing two strings. So if you have one, if this was a string and this was a string, and you want to see if they're equal to each other, you use this as opposed to other programming languages that usually have two equal signs. It's just one, so you don't have to worry. Uh, and it can be two numbers too. Like I could just make this a 90 and a 90 and see if they're equal to each other. So you just use that. So you, ha you have the equal sign. The not equals is like this. Uh, it, the less than sign followed by greater than sign. That'll be the uh, this is going to be is not equal to. Um, less than equal to, greater than equal to, and that's just about it for comparison operators. So let me show you just a simple example here. So let's uh, work with the if statement here first. So um, I'm going to actually get rid of all these now. And I'll actually get rid of this as well. So let's uh, do another, do some more examples here. So if we have input one and let's bring input two back in. And let's see if they're equal to each other. So I'll throw an equal and, whoops, yeah, input two. And then I'll throw in equal. And oh, I should have kept this, I should have kept the else. And then for down here, label output, whoops, dot text is equal to not equal. So it's going to check to see if the two things you put in are equal or not. So if I throw in, I don't know, 56 and, whoops, 56 says equal. But if I change it to 55 down here, now it's not equal. So it's checking to see if, and you can make them strings too, just, just so you know. Um, the not equals. So now it's going to look to see if they're not. So I'll change this to a not here. And I'll change the, well, you know what, this won't really show you anything. Um, you know what, I'll just set this to true, because it will only read this if this comes out as true. And then I'll change this to false. That'll be a little bit more, uh, that'll make a little bit more sense. Whoops, I want that to be a string, not a Boolean value. So I'll run this, and see if they're not equal to each other. So, um, are they not equal to each other? False, because they are equal to each other. Now are they equal to each other? Or are they not, are they now not equal to each other? Uh, I know it's a bunch of negations in my uh, cho choice of words, but now we get true. So, because they were not equal to each other. And that's about it for that. Um, the last one I would like to show you are uh, logical operators. And that's basically if you want to compare uh, more than one thing at the same time. So what you can do is you can do stuff like this, check one thing, and actually type in something like and for an example something like this so maybe you want to check if 
oh geez, input is greater or equal than 90 and you want to check if input 1 is uh, less than or equal to 100. You know what, I'll make this 90 because it'll make more sense and I'll make this 80. So less than or equal to 90? No, I just want it less than 90. So greater than or equal to 80 and it has to be less than 90 and you get a B. And an else will be false. So let's do this. So if I throw in an 86, oh you know what, I actually have to close this and make this a comment again. There we go. Now I'll click save and run. So if I make this a, I don't know, a 87, we get a B because it, both these conditions are true. Uh, it will only go on to the next code if both are true. So it says greater than or equal to 80. So what happens if I put in 97? Well, now it says false because, well, both of these weren't true. It wasn't less than 90. Another one is or. Now what or does is it will return true if at least one of these statements is true, which I think is everything. I don't think they cannot not be true. Um, 98, yep, because it's greater than or equal to 90. Uh, 67, um, 67 is true too because it's less than 90. So, or will go on if at least one of the two is. Then you can type in XOR like this. And what that does is only one can be true. If both are false, it will return false. If both are true, it will return false. It will only return true if at least one of these is true. Uh, only one is true. So here, this is a bad example. So I want to go less than, let's say, 70. And let's go, let's go greater than 65. I think this can work. So if I run this application, um, less than 70, let's go 60, returns a B, because this was true. If you go greater than 65, so let's go 75, still returns a B. But what if you go in between, so both are true, let's go 68. Now you get false, so there you go, um, only one can be true in this. And I think that was about all I wanted to show you. Oh yeah, I also want to show you nesting. Now what nesting is, is basically embedding um, one piece of code within another. It could be loops, it could be if statements, it could be um, functions within functions, which we probably won't learn until we learn like recursion and stuff like that. But you can embed if statements. So, you could have if this or this is true, execute whatever code's in here. So basically, uh, you can have a separate if statement. You know what, let's keep it separate from this. Now type in if Uh, you know what? Control Z. It didn't put in the end if for me automatically. So I'll put in input 1 is equal to 68. Then, there we go. We'll change the label output dot text to say you got a 68. So I'll, I click, or you know what? I'll change it to uh, I you know I'll ch I'll change this to 69, and I'll change this to. You were so close to passing. I know it's. Whoops. I'll click save and let's run this. So oh wait a minute I gotta change this to. I gotta change this to um, or. So let's say I throw in, I don't know, 67. Comes out with the B, right? Because it says B because both these were true, but then this embedded if statement was not true. But if I change it to a 69, now it says you were so close and it didn't quite fit all the text in there, but that's all right. Um, so yeah, that's embedding an if statement. So this B, the B was written there for like a fraction of time before it was overwritten by this if statement. And then you can also have code inside this if statement here 
after this if as well if you want to continue with any more. And that's about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.